Okay, we are ready to dive into reaction energy balances and reaction equilibrium all at once. Um, I do advise you uh, to get ready for this. Go back to uh, January. Wouldn't it be nice to actually go back to January? Um, but in this case, you're not going back to January for general purposes of doing whatever, but you're going to go back to January and see that uh, way back then we talked about the reaction energy balance. So you're going to want to go revisit that because uh, that's about to become relevant. Um, but now we are talking about not only the reaction energy balance, we are going to talk about reaction equilibrium. Uh, recall before we didn't know when the reaction was stopping, I just had to tell you when it was. Now we're going to figure out when it's stopping. We are going to figure out when the free energy has been minimized and we are at equilibrium. Okay, so another thing I should just kind of parenthetically mention, by the way, is another free energy uh, minimization thing that our colleagues in physics do is they let the atoms fall apart and you get to things like radioactive decay. But we... Uh, that's outside the scope of this course. So we're going to just stop at atoms rearranging. Anyway, at reaction equilibrium, this is how we phrase what is true. Uh, and you'll notice there's an activity sitting in this equation. Uh, that activity, you could think of it as, a, a, as activity, or we could sub in uh, one of our friends' fugacity, if that is more nice for your particular brain. Uh, same thing. Uh, and you can remember that both of these are related not only to concentration, so these activity or fugacity uh, is a function of the composition of our system, um, and it's also a function of it's related to free energy. So you can go back and look that up. But put that on hold for right now. So this here in the blue box is our condition for reaction equilibrium. And so when the reaction is at equilibrium, um, we get a zero on the left and these two other terms on the right. This is, remember, stoichiometric coefficient. So obviously this is written for a particular reaction. Um, and R and T are R and T. Activity is what we've just spent a month talking about, so that's okay. And then we have this uh, new term that maybe we haven't seen before. We have uh, G sub I zero. So this is going to be uh, free energy uh, for that component um, at the standard state. And uh, it's the standard state free energy for that stuff um, corrected to the proper temperature for our reaction. And we'll, we'll worry about temperature correction in a little bit. So uh, what we're going to do here is we are going to break this equation into uh, two bits that we are going to worry about separately. We're going to worry about this first bit up here the new delta, uh, new times g uh, first, and then we will worry about this other half next time. So let's uh, let's hop over. Nope, let's not hop anywhere yet. This particular piece in here is going to turn out to be equal to delta g zero at temperature. So. Uh, free, it's the free energy change of formation corrected to the proper temperature. So a free energy change at reaction temperature. Um, and the zero kind of tells us of formation. Okay, what are we going to do with all that? Well, let's do an example and see. Alrighty then. You will recall back when we did the reaction energy balance, I used this equation as our example, and I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, in fact, 
it's a good idea for you to build a nice flexible spreadsheet or MATLAB problem um, around this particular reaction because we're going to be using it a lot. And in fact, I'm going to give you a little kind of in-class game to play uh, running this reaction. So this reaction, methane reformation, creation of syngas. That's what's over on the right. That's syngas on the left. Uh, methane being steam reformed. So all of this is in vapor phase. So make sure if you ever do anything with the water here, it is a vapor, not liquid water. And uh, I, I have the feeling this is going to be a super relevant uh, reaction coming up uh, because uh, gasoline prices are dropping because oil prices are dropping due to uh, some international things that are going on right now. And that means that the market for all of this shale gas we have floating around from fracking uh, is, is dropping. So we're going to want to be able to turn all that methane we've got into something else, um, some other sort of useful chemical products, and this would be potentially a step in doing so. So here we go. We're going to make some syngas. Now, uh, go back uh, and check what was your reaction energy balance for this. And I'm going to give you a little hint. It had to do with the summing of nu i and delta H of formation zero. And you figured out if it was a reaction that was exothermic or endothermic at 298K, which is the standard state for our book. Well, now you're going to do the companion equation for that, which turns out to be what we just did um, on the last page. It's what we wrote out. So we want to find out free energy change at 298K. So we're, we're not able to change the temperature yet. Um, and that's the standard state free energy change. So we just wrote this on the previous page. Um, well, I take it back. I wrote it slightly differently, but this is what we want. So we need the uh, stoichiometric coefficient times the uh, free energy of formation for each component, and remember uh, that it's products. Products end up with a positive and uh, reactants end up negative. And you say, where does this information come from? Well, the delta G of formation uh, is in the back of the book. Let me know. Um, you'll note I put the uh, appendix E in Moodle. So you can uh, grab that if, if you don't have your hard copy home with you. But I want you to hit pause, or actually this is where we get off. I want you to stop and solve this problem. I want you to find delta G uh, for this reaction. And we're gonna assume that, as I said before, we're going to stick around at 298K. And then you're going to tell me what you learned in Gen Chem uh, that this means. And then I'm going to tell you it doesn't actually completely mean that, but it sort of means that. So uh, please uh, look these up, add stuff together. Remember that we are dealing with water as a vapor, and uh, that will be it for today. Enter into the quiz what you get when you add all of this up. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.